Hey, it's Lynn Liaz, and just some news updates in regards to Obama and his party uptime he had. Recently, we're going to start off with this one. You can see in the picture, he's fist bumping this guy. Well, this guy is a homosexual, and he's a cross-dresser, and he's the cashier at a fast food place that Obama visited. Now, I have written on here that Obama goes the extra mile in all that he does to show his support for the homosexual movement. Of course, since he possesses a strong spirit of antichrist and seems to support and favor anything and everything that goes against God, well, it shouldn't come as a big surprise. Recently, Obama laughed as he fist bumped a homosexual cashier who happens to moonlight as a crossdresser. Right after the cashier teased the president, stating that he has sexual relations with men. Now, in times past, who would ever think to tease so disrespectfully with a president in the first place? Okay? A president is like a king of a nation. You respect the president. Right? Or you would think so. Well, Obama certainly hasn't done anything to win the respect of people. But if that wasn't bad enough, it says that the Austin Chronicle reported that Obama visited the Franklin Barbecue on Thursday during his visit to the Lone Star State, a popular restaurant in the city that was backed up with its characteristic long line upon its arrival, or upon his arrival. Well, I read also that Obama actually cut through the line. While hurrying to the front of the line to pay for his food, he was met by cashier Daniel Rugg Webb, who also works as a comedian and musician and sometimes dresses as a drag queen. Daniel bragged to reporters that he had not donned his sequins the day that Obama visited the restaurant. As Webb slapped the counter, he stated equal rights for gay people. Are you gay, Obama asked. Webb replied, only when I have sex. He told Austin Chronicle that Obama started laughing and offered his fist, saying, bump me. According to Christian News, the two exchanged a fist bump, which was caught on camera by New York Times reporter Doug Mills. The photograph shows both of the men smiling as Obama reaches over the counter to show his support for Webb. I do stand up, so it was nice to have some interaction based on hopefully something funny, Webb stated. If Rick Perry would have walked in, I would have lost my job. I would have taken that old queen to town. But not everyone finds the exchange humorous, especially Obama's reaction as the leader of the nation. Obama never misses the opportunity to besmirch the office of President of the United States, wrote Jeffrey Greider of Now the End Begins. Fist bumping with flaming homosexuals while making wildly inappropriate gay sex jokes? Sure, Obama has never met a low that he didn't like. So, very disrespectful. And now we can see here, Obama to take the longest vacation yet, and $12 million luxury residence in Martha's Vineyard. It will be among the longest vacations Obama has taken and four times longer than the average 3.8 day vacation the typical American family takes. Nothing that the American taxpayer can provide is too good for the lavish taste of the community organizer from Kenya and his family. Obama loves to parade his ostentatious luxury vacations in the face of the American people and rub our noses in the fact that we are the ones paying for it all. Reports from the Bay State indicate that President Obama and his family will vacation August 9th through 24th at the $12 million, 8,100 square foot beachfront home of Democratic donor that includes a pool, hot tub, basketball, and tennis court. And there you can see a picture of Obama. Now, speaking of money, this one says shock as Obama orders construction of $50 million luxury resort for illegal aliens in Texas. It says Obama won't quit until he completely collapses the system. After the news of this story broke on social media this morning, Baptist Child and Family Services withdraws bid for Palm Air Resort. Original story follows below. This is one of those stories that is so fantastical that you would, or excuse me, that you cannot imagine even for a moment that it could be true. A luxury resort complex to house border criminals who enter America illegally while our military veterans die by the truckload from the crap care 
they receive at the VA? Is this really what America has become in 2014 under Obama? Well, the answer is yes. Border criminals will now enjoy beautiful swimming pools, tennis courts, and saunas, while Obama pays for it by visiting his favorite ATM, otherwise known as the American taxpayer. Obama's goal of destroying America is firmly within his grasp. He knows that no one in either Congress or the Senate can or will stop him. He is drunk with power, the power and spirit of Antichrist. ABC News affiliate KRGV in Texas reports that a Center for Unaccompanied Minors set to open in Weslaco later this year will be the first of its kind in the nation. Officials with a network of nonprofits said BCF's Health and Human Services secured a multi-million federal contract to house young illegal immigrants at the site of the current Palm Air Hotel and Suites on FM 1015. And this is a picture of it. It says representatives with BCF said the Palm Air will undergo a multi-million dollar transformation. Now, I'm not sure if this is an actual picture of it or some computer generated picture of what it's going to be, but that's what he has posted here. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. In fact, um, I just read an article on Before It's News. Let me show you. You know, just to confirm what was said here, let's go back to this one about, um, you know, our, our veterans basically not getting proper health care. Right here, a luxury resort complex to house border criminals who enter America illegally while our military veterans die by the truckload from the crap care they receive at the VA. Okay, let me confirm that with this article by Sammy712. It says, U.S. government letting veterans die. And I will put this link below my video. I want you all to check it out. Um, it's a really interesting article. But it says, veterans, the people who have seen it all and fought for U.S. when others were too frightened, the people who voluntarily risked their lives in order to keep our country safe, to keep U.S. safe, now that they are older, they need more medical treatments, but they are not receiving them in a timely manner, leading to more severe health problems and even death. It says in the article, Veterans Waiting Longer for Cancer Care by Elizabeth Cohen and John Bonafield from CNN, the writers discuss how a man named Terry Mitchell was diagnosed with a cancerous lump on his neck and needed it removed immediately. But... The VA hospital that he was attending in Dallas had a different definition of immediate. Terry had to wait over two months to receive his surgery. When compared to other hospitals, this is a very long time. Terry later on died because the cancer spread to other parts of his body, and this could have been avoided if the lump was removed faster. Now, this isn't the only story on there. There's a, several more, and I encourage you to go check out this article. It's pretty sad. So, here we have Obama investing in some luxury resort hotel for criminals, but yet, you know, what's being done about our people who have fought for our country, who are, who have either been injured or sick or elderly that are basically getting such poor medical care, they're dying. Now, here's an article on ABC News. Check out Obama's multi-million dollar Martha's Vineyard vacation pad. It says the commander in chief will be beach bumming it in Martha's Vineyard, Mass, this Massachusetts, this summer, and the home he is reportedly renting out looks amazing. President Obama and the first lady are planning a two-week vacation at a seven-bedroom, nine-bathroom home in Chilmark, the Martha's Vineyard, Vineyard Time reports. So there you have the lovely Obamas on their bike. Of course, that's one of his daughters, Malia. Obama enjoying an ice cream cone, Obama golfing, Obama shopping. I mean, Obama's just having a great old time while all hell's breaking loose in other parts, <clears throat> excuse me, in other parts of the, uh, the world, isn't he? Now look at this article. It says the Obamas have spent over $44,351,700 dollars and 12 cents in taxpayer cash on travel 
So there you go. The Obamas have spent over $44 million in taxpayer money on travel and vacations. Some are even calling him the most well-traveled, expensive president in our nation's history. As Americans head off for the long holiday weekend, let's take a look back at some of the president's holiday spending. Our president vacations a lot. We're talking, yeah, right there, what I just said. Worth of a lot, with most expenses charged to who? The American taxpayer. As of March of 2014, Obama has spent more time traveling internationally than any other president, taking 31 trips since assuming office in 2009. The 119 days spent overseas have cost taxpayers millions of dollars. At the same point in their respective presidencies, George W. Bush had spent 116 days on 28 trips, Bill Clinton had spent 113 days on 27 trips, and Ronald Reagan had spent 73 days on just 14 trips. In 2010, Obla Obama, Obama, <laughs> actually that fits him better, excuse me. In 2010, Obama flew aboard Air Force One 172 times nearly every other day, just the cost of flying aboard Air Force One to Obama's hometown of Chicago reportedly hovers around $180,000 per hour. In addition to all of his international travel, the president spends a significant amount of time traveling with his family. The Obama's family has taken vacations to exclusive beaches in New England, private clubs in Key Largo, and of course, luxurious beaches in Hawaii. According to the government watchdog group, Judicial Watch, beginning with the infamous New York date night, the Obamas have spent $44,351,777.12 in taxpayer cash on travel expenses. The actual total cost may be higher as the White House is not subject to the Freedom of Information Act. There's more to that article, but let's move on to one more as I'm running out of time. Here you go with Obama's wild night in Denver, beers, fist bumps, and a horse head. Also, someone joked with him about smoking pot and he actually just cracked up laughing about it. The beer was certainly loose in Denver on Tuesday evening. President Obama was in the Mile High City for a dinner with five Americans who wrote him letters about the economy, but that doesn't imply there wasn't time for a tiny entertaining. First up that dinner, okay, Obama greeted uh, diners at the Wazi Supper Club and complimented the bartender on his mustache. That's a cool stash, Obama told the man before settling in for a meal pizza. It was pretty neat, reporters there noted. Brown in a single side, gray on the other. President Obama has a pizza dinner, pizza dinner with letter writers in Denver, Colorado. And then there's a Twitter URL. A president, a gorilla, and a man in a horse mask. Um, pretty interesting. Some man in a horse mask. Um, is standing there to greet Obama, and Obama is kind of caught off guard, and then weed is brought up. And here you go with that picture, Obama and the guy in the horse mask, and it says at a single point, a man asked the president if he'd like a hit of weed. Obama could only laugh. At least he has something in common with Bill Clinton. And then point me to the closest bar. From there, Obama went to Denver's um, Wincoop Brewing Firm, where he hung out with Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper. So there you can see him bumping beers. They chatted, they played pool, they had a high old time. And yeah, it was just party it up and spend lots of money. So there's your latest news on Obama. Hope you enjoy it. And you can see what a schmuck we have in the office right now. How disrespectful, how horrible, how unbelievable that the United States of America would vote for such a person to be king of their nation. Shame on us. Thank you so much and God bless you.